Mixed Media Flowers, an art journaling and mixed media workshop. Hi, I am Rike Blokland, your art teacher at blocknote.nl and you are watching Art Journal TV. I make this series to inspire you to be creative, make art and have fun. Hello art journalers and art friends, this is Marike Blokland from blocknow.nl and I'm here with another video. I just came back from Art Specially Stamping and Mixed Media event, which is an event in the Netherlands. Uh, I was asked by Likitex to give workshops there and we made this fun little project. I used a lot of Likitex products here in this project because obviously I was paid by Likitex to give this workshop. But uh, this video is not sponsored. I'm just genuinely enthusiastic about some of their products and then especially their mediums. I use the matte gel medium a lot. I use the fluid medium a lot. Their clear gesso, um, some of their other gessos. That is what I really love. And then also I'm a big fan <laughs> of these products. Uh, they're freestyle uh, products. Uh, the freestyle brushes I really love and their freestyle palette knives. So these are the products, products I was already using a lot and they asked me to give this workshop and then uh, together we selected the materials that I uh, already love using. So this is an, uh, this video is not sponsored by Liquitex but obviously I got their uh, products for free. So <laughs> it, uh, it isn't product placement, but um, I just wanted to tell you that um, I was paid by Liquitex to give this workshop. Anyway, in the event I taught 150 people how to create this, but still there were so many people who could not join because it was fully booked and I felt really sorry because there were just so many lovely enthusiastic people there who wanted to uh, learn mixed media techniques. So I thought I still have all the supplies here. I haven't even cleaned everything uh, from the fair. It's still in bags so I just got some of the uh, stuff out of the bags. I thought hey uh, I'm here. I'm really tired. I don't feel like working today. Um, I'm just <laughs> really tired but I, uh, I have all the products and I still wanted to make a fun video and since the story is so in my head, why not film it right now? So that you can join me in this fun little online workshop that I yeah, just show you for free. Because I just want to teach you uh, this fun little project. I hope you like it. Uh, I'll show you what um, we are going to do and what supplies you will need. And uh, you can collect the materials, you can of course also use other brands, other products, but obviously I'm using the Liquitex products here because that is what I made this project with and I have them here around me. Um, I used my journal in the workshop to show people the steps that I made to do this fun little project. So um, I'm going to use that for you as well, but I warn you, <laughs> I used this journal the entire weekend, so it's just really messy because then you are talking to people and just you show little parts here and there and there to show a certain technique and now it's getting really messy. Uh, I'm really looking forward to actually uh, start working over these pages because often these are really fun background pages to start working uh, on and make new projects with it with this but anyway they're now really messy so uh, in order to create this piece I did the following I first uh, made a good layer of color you can use any color you love and I only used two colors for the whole piece um, so I just painted it with one color and then I stick these fun cupcake wraps. These are just regular cupcake wraps from the Hema actually. This is a that's a Dutch uh, chain store, a warehouse but you can use other cupcake uh, wraps for this or any other 
um, fun thin uh, tissue paper. Uh, but the fun thing of these little papers is that they have these stripes. So I got these in three parts and I stick them on my paper with matte gel medium and this palette knife. I really love the palette knives by Liquitex because, well, from other brands they're often uh, pretty um, solid and sturdy and the palette knives from Liquitex are really flexible but still really solid. But I love that these are so flexible and uh, especially the this knife, uh, small knife number 11, which is from the freestyle range. I just really love this pellet knife a lot. I use it uh, pretty much every day. And then I also added a bit of structure in the background. This kind of structure. I used this uh, ceramic stucco for that which is an effect uh, texture gel. Liquitex has a lot of texture gels in their collection and they're all really awesome. So you have things with tiny glass beads and little uh, mica flakes. But for the workshop I used the Ceramic Stucco 1 because it dries really fast. So you can just use your heat tool to dry it. And the other ones will dry slower. They have quite some uh, need so quite some time to dry, but it is really fun to use them in your journal. So if you find any other texture gel, you should really try them. They're really fun to use to give some structure to your background, and you can use them really th thick with a stencil. I used a stencil here as well. I will show you that in this video later as well. But uh, during the workshop last weekend I didn't because then the layers get too thick and it just takes too much time to dry in a workshop of only 30 minutes. But you add some texture with a palette knife or something and then uh, you dry this with your heat tool. And then next um, I added another layer. Uh, I took the same color as the background, but I added a bit of white acrylic paint and made the page more blotchy and then I covered all the parts where there was the texture gel so that it becomes really part of the background. And then my favorite bit is I'm going to splatter with toothbrushes. Actually Liquitex has uh, very fun uh, splatter brushes in their collection. But yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> I just really love to use the toothbrush. I really value all the high quality artists uh, products, but yeah, for splattering there's just nothing like just a good old toothbrush. So I use that to splatter, but what I do use and what I do love is to use the uh, Liquitex inks. For example, these, these uh, are the same uh, the, these aren't actually inks, ink, it's not ink ink, but it is a fluid uh, acrylic paint. So you call this acrylic ink to be really exact. So uh, with this fluid uh, acrylic ink you can make really nice splatters. And it is really important to use acrylic ink for this because all these product products are acrylic based. So the, the textured gel and then the, the matte gel medium that I use for the sticking and the acrylic paint and the acrylic ink, it's all acrylic and that makes it what Liquitex calls intermixable. So then you can mix all those products in a very fun way without that it's going to do <laughs> weird things. So that's why it's important to stay with the acrylic type of products when building up all those layers. Um, and then finally, uh, when I did the splattering, I also made some finishing touches. I just gave these flowers a little stem and painted some leaves and some dots and some fun little, little doodly details. Um, you don't have to make flowers of this. It's also really fun to keep it more abstract and leave out those stems. I love abstract uh, patterns as well, but, but at uh, a mixed media fair like where I was last weekend there are all sorts of people, also all sorts of uh, crafters and I noticed that people often 
love to make a pretty flower but it's also just fun like more like here to keep it more abstract in your art journals I, I like that as well so that's up to you well that's roughly how I made it but I'm now actually going to show you this so that is why this video is probably a lot longer than you're used to but I think it's just fun to really show you one on one life well it's not life but um uncut how I made that fun little piece so that you can join me so if you have some sticking material any type of acrylic medium where you can stick paper with some kind of paper palette knife uh, some paint and some something maybe like a toothbrush or any other brush where you can splatter with uh, well if you have all those materials I showed you then you're good to go so you can take them and then we're going to actually make it now I'm going to take a white page and I'm going to start creating um, I'm not going to start recreating, I should say, my fun little project of this weekend. On this uh, project I used the turquoise, or sorry, it's a cobalt teal. And that's a really popular color. Well, you see all my uh, tubes are close to empty because that's really a popular color here in the Netherlands. So I'm going to use a uh, light blue and it's called light blue permanent and I'm also going to use the cobalt blue hue color. I just added a tiny bit of paint to the background. I want to keep the layer very uh, thin so that it dries really quickly. I'm obviously working on paper here and this was on a little canvas so this is a tiny bit more structured and this paper is pretty smooth so the structure will be a bit different from uh, this piece but that's okay. Because uh, I kept this layer pretty uh, thin I can quickly dry it. I'm just using a regular heat tool for this. So it's dry already because I kept the layer so uh, thin. So I'm now going to stick the uh, cupcake wrapper on it. This is what I did. I fold it in half and I cut out a little circle. And then the piece that is uh, left over here, I'm going to cut that one as well. So now I have three pieces. One large circle and then the middle part, the center. and. A smaller circle and I place these next to it so there are two little flowers that you can uh, place next to each other you can paste these with uh, a palette knife and the matte gel you can also use the fluid medium for this but I really love to use gel medium because it's just a little smoother to spread out the, the fluid medium is very fluid but I know a lot of people who prefer the fluid as well so during the workshop I also had the fluid matter medium and uh, one of the most asked questions was what is the difference between the matter gel medium or the matter fluid medium and uh, there isn't a big difference because it's pretty much the same uh, product but the gel medium is uh, thick like gel so it's really creamy and the fluid is fluid <laughs> so it's just oh, this one is almost empty I wanted to show you but this one is empty um, do I have another one? yes matte medium fluid this is just more fluid so it's just really the substance um, of the product but I really love to use the matte gel for sticking because it's so creamy and easy to spread out I often use my <coughs> sorry my palette knife to do this so you can create a really nice thin layer to stick these papers and I keep it really uh, thin and then you press the paper on the background like that and you can um, wipe off a little bit underneath here you can wipe off all the excess uh, gel medium straight away 
so that you can keep the layers really nice and thin so um, that's really economical as well and then you have some excess uh, gel medium on the back of your palette knife and you can use that straight away to stick the other ones on your canvas or in your art journal as well let me see if I the circle is a bit harder to stick because you have to mold it a bit but as soon as it's flat you can press it down more gel medium and then you can press the paper onto the background as well and then you do the same with the third part place the paper on top of the gel medium add another layer of gel medium and then it's nicely sealed between two very thin layers of gel medium and um, yeah this is really well protected now when working with a palette knife you really have to uh, make sure you always clean it straight away um, because then that saves you a lot of time <laughs> to scratch off all the excess material because once dry it is really sticking on your palette knife and then you can get it off with a, a knife or something but it's just saving you a lot of time to get used to wiping the products off the palette knife straight away. Um, then without drying it first you can go straight away to the textured layer I'm just uh, using a tiny bit of ceramic stucco here just to give a little bit of structure to the background just like that and then you can also scratch a bit in that um, uh, texture gel just to give it an extra bit of texture. I promised you to also show how it works uh, using a stencil. Uh, you can use any type of stencil for this. Uh, this um, oh, I'm using this one, just a tiny bit, just to show you how that works. You can place a stencil on your background, take a bit of the texture gel and then press that into the stencil. And then when you lift it, there is a bit of the pattern of the stencil onto the background. We uh, skipped this part during the workshop uh, this weekend because then the layers get a tiny bit thicker. And I found that it took uh, too long to dry. Especially when there were people out there uh, with little experience in these techniques. They were just a tiny bit slower and that's okay, it's not <laughs> being critical or something. But it's just how it works. If you've never done something, if you're doing something for the first time, you're just a bit slower. I'm going to dry it now with my heat tool. So this is almost dry. The, uh, these structures, structure paste... Um, it takes quite some time to dry, but I find that the ceramics to go dries uh, most fast of them all. And I really love that grainy uh, structure that it gives. Um, now I'm going to uh, add another layer of the uh, acrylic paint. But this time I'm adding a tiny bit of white. I'm going to put a tiny bit in here. A bit of white. And a bit of the same color and I'm going to use these uh, flat brushes which are also by the freestyle range of Ligitex. Um, I'm not going to mix the white and the black I'm just going to add uh, both of them and then mix them on the background so I'm taking a bit of blue and I'm taking a bit of white and just make it a bit blotchy just to add more interest to that background and I want the uh, structure paste covered completely because I want that to be integrated in the background it doesn't have to be uh, beautifully uh, painted just 
uh, wiping the paint on the background and also doing that in the insides of the flowers and then what you find is that these cupcake wraps are really uh, sticked on the background and what you want is that they are more uh, integrated in the whole piece so that it's becoming uh, really uh, one uh, together really looking as one um, yeah, complete whole is that correct to say in English? complete whole? <laughs> um, I'm looking for the English word, sorry people Anyway, if I would paint over this, it would be uh, covered and I don't want it to be covered like this. I want it to be um, that you see the black and white very well, but I don't want that it's just like a sticked paper on the background. So once this brush is really dry like this, so there's not much paint coming off anymore, when it's really dry like this, then I'm not taking new paint. But at that point I'm going uh, along the sides of the cupcake and because there is a little bit of gel medium over those wraps it's going to give a really painterly effect that I really like. So this is how I create that it. it's really looked, it looks like um, those black and white stripes are really painted on the background instead of just a paper wrap that's just something I on there so I'm using a really dry brush to do that and then of course the rest of the background I, I do want a nice layer of paint on that as, because um, I want to get uh, all the uh, structure paste covered with a nice layer of acrylic paint And if you want you can add uh, another color. I'm going to use only blues here but it's really nice to add a more uh, contrasting color as well like for example purple or pink but I love to stick with the blues today. Not that I'm feeling blue, no. I just like blue. <laughs> I just like blue as a color. Just a tiny bit. Just make a bit of Blotches here and there and add some different um, blues in the background and it makes it a little bit less uh, flat as well add a little bit more interest into the background By the way, this is heavy body gel. I know Liquitex has uh, a lot of beautiful soft body gel. Uh, soft uh, gel, sorry. Heavy body acrylic. I mean acrylic paint. Uh, Liquitex has a lot of soft body acrylics uh, as well. But the color range that is um, available here in the Netherlands is uh, less than in the uh, United States. Uh, I'm really hoping that they will uh, add to the European collection as well but uh, for now um, here in Europe or at least here in the Netherlands I'm not sure but I've been told that here in the Netherlands they don't have all the soft body paints uh, just yet but I really hope that we will get them um, one day but that's why I'm using the heavy body and it's just a little bit of a thicker type of paint well I think this is okay 
it's not perfect but I really want to do this in uh, the same amount of time as I did uh, in the workshop last weekend and now I'm again going to dry this with my um, heat tool so now that this is dry I'm going to paint uh, tiny floral leaves here just doesn't have to be neat actually they're just more like um, a little paint stroke brush stroke And I think it's fun because now it's dry I can add a little of dry brush strokes here as well. Just like to be a bit messy. And what I also like is to add some details in the same color I'm using here. Like that and now the most fun part I think <laughs> is the splattering I really love splattering with toothbrushes I think I never grew up really <laughs> it's just something I really love and I often use these acrylic inks for that and th this is how I do that I just take a tiny bit of ink from the bottle and I put it on my toothbrush and I try to always close the bottle straight away and then I put my index finger like this and then I take it uh, I scrape it along my finger and then you get this beautiful mist of splatters really tiny little splatters and I really like that but to make it a little bit more interesting, I also love to add, for example, a black splattering. And I'm putting a tiny drip of the black acrylic ink on my toothbrush. But because there was still a bit of white on it, of course, it's getting a bit grey. And I really like that as well, that you get the different types of splattering. Or different colours, different... And then what I also lo love is to splatter with the actual paint itself because that gives a different uh, types of splatter. Um, the paint obviously is a lot thicker because the ink is really fluid and this is a heavy body paint. But I still love to splatter with this uh, paint. I um, you don't want to uh, make your uh, brush like really wet, but I tip the tip of the brush into the water so it's a tiny bit uh, wet. Then I uh, take a bit of paint on the toothbrush and I do the same uh, thing. But then uh, what you get, I will show you here on the page next to it. What you get is that it's getting uh, giving these lovely little threads here. You see. It's a little bit stripy type of splatters and that is what I do as well. Voila! And then often you have a tiny bit of paint on your brush and then you can wipe that along the sides as well.
And if you like, you can also splatter a bit with, for example, the same color as the background. Okay. Um, I think I want a tiny bit of bigger white splatters as well. What you can also do is just take a bit of the uh, acrylic ink and of course you can also splatter with a brush. Just take a brush, take a bit of ink on the brush, make some larger splatters here and there as well. Okay, that's it for the splattering. Um, now I'm going to dry it and then I can draw the final details. Then during the workshop of last weekend I painted the details just with this flat brush which you can do really well with the acrylic ink. Because um, you can, if you uh, use the small side, you can actually paint pretty nice thin little stripes. But uh, when working at home, and well, I am at home right now, I actually often use these uh, liner brushes and I really prefer these. So I'm going to use these now because I really like them. Um, and I just paint some tiny details, for example, on the dark blue blotches you can put tiny white dots you can also use an acrylic marker for that as well of course Likitex has also fun acrylic markers in their collection that are of course intermixable with all the other acrylic products just a little doodly swirl there and give the flowers a little stem what I really like about the liner brushes is that they, they just draw really nice expressive lines these are also often used for uh, lettering, but I really love to use them for this kind of thin uh, brush strokes. I wanted to keep it a bit playful, so I don't really think about it for too long. And that's it. What I often do is draw some tiny little symbols. My favorites are these uh, checker, how do you call that in English? When you draw stripes? I don't know, sorry. Um, sometimes I draw tiny little circles and of course little X's. And uh, that's it. So that is how I reproduced this fun little project here. But then in uh, a different blue and then with dark blue uh, details instead of purple. I know of course that this is not like really my best art journal page ever. But it's just uh, fun to, to see some of the techniques. And uh, this was just a nice fun little project uh, that uh, was doable for all uh, skill levels and then use some of the fun products by Liquitex. Uh, in my art journal I love to play with this type of elements and then you can be really more exploring. For example I make this kind of pages with that. I cut the rings very thin and then thick and layer other elements so I really love to be really playful with elements like that so that's something that you can do as well and I did that in pretty much the same way but I added a few more layers I added for example some uh, stamped numbers here in the background 
or uh, what I also really love is adding a layer of clear gesso and then add details with um, colored pencils or for example stick in some um, uh, stickers like these uh, um, pink uh, dots or a black arrow so that's something that you can do as well um, one final layer that I really love to do over all my work is adding a layer of clear gesso and I can show you that and what's the difference To a lot of my pages I often add a really, a really thin layer of clear gesso. Clear gesso really makes a nice uh, base coat for when you want to work with, for example, crayons or colored pencils over mixed media work like this. And that is what I often do and what I really like. And I love to use these thick flat freestyle brushes for that. So what I really like about covering a page with clear gesso as well is that it's getting a really nice grainy texture that holds color pencils and crayons really well but it's also covered in a matte uh, layer that is really uh, consistent as well so there's no glossy elements once dry. Let's dry this so now I covered everything with a nice layer of clear gesso and that is where the workshop actually ended. But uh, since I'm at home and I covered it with a nice layer of clear gesso, I might as well show you what I do at home when journaling and I covered my entire project with my favorite uh, Liquitex clear gesso. What I do next, often I take uh, colored pencils and I just started start scribbling a tiny bit here and there, add some accents with the color pencils. And because the, the clear gesso, which is really nice, what they call uh, surface prep, uh, that is translucent, so you see everything there. But it's just, um, it makes the color of the pencil really pop out. Finding that little swirl there a bit. And I love to add a few more accents and often I do scribble a bit like this. And you can of course also do that with another uh, with a color. And on a page like this I would not use a very Bold color because everything is uh, blue, but you can, for example, take a light blue. Just add a tiny bit of texture. For example, define the flowers a bit more. This is really what I love to do in my art journals. And that makes it truly mixed media, because now I'm mixing all the acrylic media with some colored pencils. Like that. Okay, and now I have to leave it as is, because I really could go on for hours adding more details and layering a lot. Because when you look at my art journals, I wouldn't um, quit here. I would layer and layer and layer and layer. <laughs> Just continue layering until I find my page interesting. And I would normally add so much more detail to this, but for the sake of this video, I leave it now as is. Okay, I really hope you like this tutorial video and that you learned something from it. If you liked it please uh, give me a thumbs up and maybe uh, you could tell me if you're going to make it or which uh, color combination you would prefer. Uh, please let me know that in a comment below and I see you again in the next video. Bye! 
thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more art journal videos, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.